Okay, so hello and welcome to the next installment in our webinar series. So as you all know, my name is Jerry Naidu. I am the IT tutor and mentor at IT Online Learning. So I see we have a few newcomers uh, today uh, for today's, um, today's webinar. And I would like to extend a very special uh, welcome to you all and welcome to you to the uh, IT Online Learning family. I do hope you, um, you learn a lot in today's, uh, today's webinar. So today we're gonna be uh, covering the, uh, the power supply. So um, like, like I said, today is a, it's a very interesting topic that, um, that I've actually been preparing for quite some time. Uh, so, you know, let's, let's, let's not delay any further. Let's, let's just jump right into uh, today's topic. So let's begin by stating the obvious. Okay, computers need electricity to function. So without it, a computer is nothing more than an expensive paperweight. So in today's lesson, we're, gonna, we're going to look at the components that's responsible for powering a computer, and that is the power supply. So in a personal computer, uh, so the power supply is the metal box that's usually found in a corner of the case, either at the top or the bottom. The location is actually dependent on the case itself. The power supply is visible uh, from the back of many systems because it uh, contains the power cord receptacle and the, the cooling fan. So a typical power supply unit will have integrated connectors to send power to the motherboard, the CPU, and the, uh, the, SATA, store, the uh, SATA storage devices as well. So let's take a look at the back of a power supply, right? So this is a typical ATX power supply. The ATX tells us that the power supply adheres or conforms to the ATX form, uh, form factor specifications. So right now we're looking at the back panel of the power supply. So this is a part um, of the power supply that's exposed when it's installed in the computer case. So here you'll typically see a power switch like this one uh, that turns the power supply on and off. So you might also see, uh, depending on the power supply that you have, you might also see a voltage selector switch. So it's used to toggle the input voltage uh, between 115 and 230 volts. So depending on which is being used. So some power supplies are able to automatically switch between voltages, eliminating the need for the switch. So these types of power supplies specify a voltage range that they are compatible with, which is usually between 100 volts and 240 volts. So most power supplies also have uh, air holes on the back, which aid in, um, in cooling the power supply, uh, while some models have a fan, uh, well, some models have a fan over here uh, instead. So on the back panel of all power supplies is a power connector, or if we want to get a bit more uh, technical, we get, it's actually a C14 uh, connector. It's located right over here. So this is where the power cord from the wall plugs into. Now, the electricity that comes in here from the power cord is 230 volt AC power. Bearing in mind 230 volt AC power, as I've mentioned, the voltage is dependent on your region. However, the components inside a computer use DC power. So this means that the AC power from the outlet needs to be converted to DC power. So this is one of the main functions of a power supply to convert the main AC to low voltage regulated DC power that is required to power a computer's components. Okay. So the 230 volt AC power uh, from the wall flows into the power supply where it's converted into three DC voltage levels, 12 volts, five volts, and 3.3 volts. Okay, I'll say that again, 12 volts, five volts, and 3.3 volts. This is because different components, like I mentioned before, the motherboard, the CPU, or the expansion cards have different voltage requirements. Now, let's look, now the, the converted DC power uh, flows out of the power supply's wire bundle, which is on the opposite side uh, of the power supply here. 
uh, you'll find it right over here. So the power supply's wire bundle contains a variety of, um, of, different, of different connectors that plug into components and provide them with the correct voltage of uh, DC power. Remember, like I stated uh, before, just a few moments ago, 12 volts, 5 volts, and 3.3 volts. That's something you're going to be finding. Uh, you're going to be finding. <clears throat> you're going to need to memorize these three voltage levels. It's going to be very, very crucial um, as you learn your courseware. Now, it's important to know that the number of components a power supply can handle. Um, it isn't based on the number of its connectors. So, for example, a power supply could have, let's say, 10 hard drive connectors, but this does not mean it can power 10 hard drives. So, instead, power supplies use a power rating called watts, which is a measurement of its maximum power output. So, as you start adding um, hard drives, uh, optical drives, or let's say high end video cards, uh, your power needs increase substantially. So as such, you're going to need a more powerful um, power supply to power any and all additional components and devices you add to the computer. So if necessary, you can identify your exact power needs by adding up the wattage requirements for each of the components uh, you need um, to power. So. Just remember the power supply's main function is to provide power to components. But if the connected components uh, themselves draw more power uh, than the power supply can actually handle, they will shut off. So let's move on to another aspect of the power supply and that's the cooling. So another part of the power supply is its fan. So most ATX power supplies will have a large fan that helps uh, to cool the units. You'll find the fan here as well as over here. So however, the fan itself also has a, a secondary purpose. So when installed in the case, a power supplies fan also aids in uh, what I like to call thermal management. So remember, like I've, um, like I've stated in, in the beginning, the power supplies are typically installed at the bottom or the top of the case. Uh, like I said, it purely depends on the case itself uh, that, that you have in your possession. So this positioning allows the power supplies fan to pull hot air out of the computer case, allowing cooler air from the front of the case to flow in. Now, we're gonna talk about um, installing a power supply. So to be very, very honest with you, um, installing a power supply is really one of the easiest things you will ever do. Any, I mean, to, to, be, to be very honest with you, it, it, it's such an easy thing to, to install into your, um, into your system. So before installing a power supply into your PC, you need to remember uh, to ground yourself before physically handling uh, your power supply or the inside of your case by either wearing an ESD wrist strap or by just by regularly touching a metal object. So you also need to uh, you also need to locate where exactly the power supply uh, can be mounted within the case. Remember, like I've said before, um, the look the mounting location will depend uh, on the on the case uh, on the case itself. So uh, so like so for example. Um, so if, if you're installing a top mounted uh, power supply, the process is pretty much um, going to be the same as mounting a, um, a power supply that needs to be mounted at the bottom. So you'll just need to slot it in, screw it in place. And as you find, as we're doing here um, at the bottom mounted uh, power supply uh, installation. So the second step is actually to secure the power supply. Uh, into the um, into the case. So you'll essentially line up the screw holes on the back of the case with the power supply unit. And while holding the power supply unit firmly in place, you can then go ahead and screw in um, the screws that should have been provided with your power supply unit. Uh, most power supply units that you do purchase will come with um, will come with additional screws so that you can screw them into the um, into the case themselves. 
Or alternatively, if you do not possess uh, screws, uh, if, if the power supply unit that you had purchased does not come with any screws, you can use the screws that was, um, would have been provided uh, when you did purchase the, um, <coughs> the computer case. Otherwise, so tighten them nice, firmly, but not, uh, not overly tight. And really, that is all there is to it, to installing a power supply um, into the case. So the next thing that you would essentially need to do um, is just to um, install all of the relevant uh, power connectors uh, into the motherboard, um, such as your, your 20 plus 4 pin motherboard connector, the 4 plus 4 pin CPU connector, and the, um, the SATA power connectors as well to the appropriate drives. So this is essentially something that was covered in, uh, in previous uh, webinars about the, about the motherboard. So be sure to check that out. Be sure to check out the, uh, the previous webinar on motherboard, uh, just so that you know exactly where each power connector uh, needs to be plugged into. Okay, and if you haven't already watched that webinar, or uh, as I've noticed, some of you are new to the, uh, to the webinar series, um, if this is your first time, um, please pop an email across to me. I'll be happy to forward all of the recordings um, across to you. Just as, as a bit of added knowledge, I'll be more than happy to, to send that um, across to you as well. And that's essentially it for, for with regards to uh, the, the power supply. So remember with power supplies, they actually have two primary functions, okay? Two primary functions. First, they convert AC power to DC power. Remember, first they convert AC power to DC power. And second, they provide 12, 5, and 3.3 uh, uh, volts of DC power to components. So power supplies also provide a secondary function, which is to aid in thermal management. And lastly, it's absolutely essential to know exactly how much of components, uh, how much of power, rather, how much of power the components in your computer will require. Remember, as I did mention earlier, so if you have too many components or more than, the, uh, if you have way too much of uh, components in the, um, uh, in, the, in the computer itself, your components will, will shut off, okay? So that essentially, uh, that will essentially be uh, it for today's, um, well, for today's uh, webinar. So I do have, as usual, I do like to, um, to pop a bit of a quiz for many of the many of you who um, who are attending uh, who have attended previous webinars, you would be familiar. This is something that I'm um, making, I say, a bit more uh, more frequent uh, in um, in future webinars as well. Just to pop up a bit of a quiz to see if you've all been um, been paying attention uh, in, in in the webinar. <laughs> As the question says, you need to replace the power supply in your home desktop computer. Which of the following specifications are the most likely to affect your power supply choice? Select three. Input voltage, output wattage, output voltage, form factor, type and number of connectors. <laughs> okay, so that is question number one. So if you chose B, D, E, if you chose B, D, E, output wattage, form factor, type, and number of connectors, you will be correct. So when choosing a power supply, select the power supply form factor that matches the motherboard and case form factor, whether it's ATX, micro ATX, mini ITX, etc. Make sure that the power supply has the correct type and number of power connectors for all of your devices. Also ensure that you select the power supply with sufficient watts to power all devices. So the higher the watts, the more internal and external devices that can be supported. <music> So again, you have a desktop computer that uses, 250, uses a 250 watt power supply. You recently added four new hard disk drives to the system and it now spontaneously shuts down. 
So which of the following would most likely rectify this issue? A, upgrade to a power supply that provides more volts. B, use the switch on the power supply to switch from 100, so to 115 volts to 230 volts. C, upgrade to uh, smaller capacity hard drives or D, upgrade to a power supply that provides more watts. Okay, so if you chose D, upgrade to a power supply that provides more watts, you would be correct. So the number of devices uh, the a power supply can or power supplies can support is directly related to the number of watts the power supply provides. So in this situation, four, the four new hard drives, uh, along with all of the other components in the system, is drawing more watts than the power supply can provide. So, like I said, a watt rating is uh, a, a, a watt is a rating of the amount of work that the power supply uh, can do. So, number three, you have a desktop computer that you want to upgrade. You add several internal components and external components. You realize that you need to ensure that your power supply can support all of the new devices. So, which of the following power supply ratings best describes the rating used to determine this? Okay. So, is it A, AC voltage rating, B, DC voltage rating, C, resistance rating, or D, watt rating? Okay, so for question number three, if you chose D, what rating, you would be correct. So the number of devices that can be supported by a power supply is directly related to the number of watts the power supply is rated for. So power supplies, what rating determines its maximum power output. That wraps up today's uh, webinar. I would like to uh, again thank you all for for, for attending the uh, the webinar. A special uh, thank you for those who are new at IT Online Learning for also uh, attending. So this is the first uh, of many, and yep, I will see you again in the next one. Okay, take care, guys. Mm -hmm.